Hey, welcome to Happy Tales of Happy Tales, the podcast where you'll hear stories of the way pubs have touched our hearts and our lives. So for the next few minutes, let everything else go and just listen and smile. I'm your host, Lily Jackson. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's just me and the dogs, and you might see a token cat running around at some point, so, you know. Well, you know, it's funny because I keep the door open behind me in this room Mm -hmm. because both my healers are at my feet right now. Oh, no, and you're not allowed to. Their closed doors are not allowed. That's right. No. Yes. I can't even it, pee in private, so I understand. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even know the last time I've gone to the bathroom alone. Like, my husband's like, why do you always have the door open? I'm like, do you not understand? Like, this is my life. Like, if it's <laughs> not the dog, it's the cat. Like, I can't even take a bath in private without somebody assisting me in some right. capacity. Right. Yeah. And the, But then we'd be so lost. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think it's like, you know, like, like my husband's like, well, you know, they don't, it's not, it's not a problem for me. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's you, but you know, like I'm mom. There's a very big difference when you're a well, mom versus dad. It's really funny too, though, because, um, the dogs they they'll do that with him too. Um, mm-hmm. now we have, we, which we were finally referred to as the floofs. Now the Husky mixes, uh, Chuck and Barney Floof. and yeah. yeah, the floofs, may, they, you may see them like come in and out. They're real busy mm-hmm. the whole time, but it's funny because like right now the healers are the girls and there are seniors and both of them right here, the floofs, uh, Ricky was down sleeping on the couch and the floofs were napping on the love seat right next to him. So I think it's funny. Cause we call, um, my husband and I, we call um baby geese floofs oh and we call baby ducks fleefs oh so we have floofs and fleefs we I see them at this time of year so i think it's funny you're like you call the puppies the floofs and i'm like floofs. Yes. yes it's a great yep. oh. word well and see here here we go i see one hi, i see a floof yeah. hi buddy a wild floof spotted yes. yes yes and originally i never intended to use the video Um, and if you're cool with it, I might, uh, you know, post some excerpts, but one reason that I started rethinking it is because like one day I was talking to someone and all of a sudden Barney comes flying in and then he leaps over the chairs behind me. It was like a whole show going on in it's, you know, like in the Oh, I was doing an, I was doing an interview for work. Um, and it was like a live stream thing and I'm just, and they're interviewing me because I'm going up. Um, so for my job, I, I work at a nonprofit and you know yeah. um, they're following my journey getting diagnosed with um, arthritis because it's what oh. we do you know so they're recording me and they're asking me like my fears and concerns and all this and the entire time <laughs> this one hi drug is assisting oh he's barking the entire time like every time she asks, asks a question he's just barking away and I'm like excuse me this is about me right now like thank god the um, audio engineer he was able to like go through and like clean it all up because they use this for social media stuff. And I'm like, right. and you see me while she's talking, you see me like doing like the mom eyes, like you shut up, you know, I'm yes, muted, you're like, yes. bark, you know, and you see me yes. like patting him and rubbing his chest, like stop barking, you know, kind of thing. And I feel bad because they've muted it. So it's like really out of context. So it just looks like I have crazy eyes going on in the background. <laughs> it's but funny because I, I wonder how but, many, like how many dog people can watch this and be like, Oh, I know what's happening right there. I know what's I know. going on. Like, you know, know. yeah. I know that look. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At work, I'm. it's a privilege to be able to work from home sometimes. Yeah. And so I get to do it one or two days a week. And usually they're great. And they just do their thing. They usually crash. Oh, yeah. and, and that's Absolutely. fine. Absolutely. They take their puppy naps and everything's wonderful. Yes. yes. Every now and then, though, all of a sudden out of the blue, they'll just decide to have like World War Three is going on. And I'm on a call with, say, a doctor's office or a mm-hmm. patient. And I, mm-hmm. I realized I need to start keeping things on my desk. I can throw at them because uh, yes, they're just out of reach. And I'm like, well, I don't want to throw a water bottle because that's hard. And I and so I thought I need to keep like some of those stress balls or something. Yeah, get their Koosh, attention. Like the Koosh balls from back in the era. Yes. Oh my gosh, that would be perfect. Yeah. And then because mm-hmm. it always happens when I'm not where I can. Every and they do. I think they just like they know. Like Apollo will come. And I'll be on a video call and Apollo will almost always want to come and like sit like right on my chest. Like, and I'm on at my desk. And so he will have to like literally like walk over and like, you know, <laughs> lie on me. And I'm like, why? Is why? there no place else? The, exa- the, the whole, and I have like a heating pad on like on the kitchen. Like, cause, cause my um, office is 
it's kind of like kitty corn the kitchen it's you know um you know how like in the 70s they had like that little nook area for mm -hmm. where the, the little table was near the kitchen so that little nook area is where i have my my desk and stuff so you oh, see nice. the kitchen behind me so the cats have like a whole island area where it's just heating pad and food and they like lie there most of the times but sometimes they like to wrestle in the background so i'm on a meeting and here the cats are like wrestling in the background or they come over and they want to lie on me or like join me or then Drago wants to assist. And sometimes he likes to cram himself underneath my desk, this 120 yes. some odd pound dog. And I'm like, I have no room for you. Yeah. And yes, and no room is not something they comprehend. As as smart, no. it, even the smartest animal, they don't. They no. Don't that yeah, I tell them, I'm like, there's no room at the inn right now. I am sorry. <laughs> No room at the inn. Does and not it, compute. Yes. No. We're going to be right here. Talk, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. So. So who are you going to tell us about today? Um, Probably Drago, because oh. I have so many stories about Drago. Um, I mean, I, I don't know where to begin. I mean, it's just, he was, I've done, so I had many, many dogs my entire life. Like I was raised with English Bull Terriers. And then we had lots of like Terriers, like Bedlington Terriers and stuff like that. Airedales. You know, mm. I'm very familiar with bullheaded, tenacious, stubborn, intelligent animals. You know, I'm yes. used to that. And then we went on and we did Border Collies and Standard Poodles, you know. So I've had like, you know, and I've done rescue. So we just different, different breeds throughout my life. Before I got this thing, you know, I had... I thought Isla was difficult because I'd never had a healer before in my entire life. I didn't oh. want a healer. When I was fostering, um, I found Isla off the side of a road in a highway in Arizona. And I didn't know what she was. Nobody knew what she was. We thought maybe she was an Aussie mix. She's well, so stunning, too. She's so beautiful. She's beautiful, but she yeah. is so, like, it's she's so reactive with the healer bit. So mm -hmm. that's the things I had to learn. So as I was, like, as she got older, I'm like, she's less i'm like she's not an aussie like her behavior is not an aussie it's not a border collie what are you and finally it like clicked i'm like she's she's a blue she's healer she's blue. you know like I, I never had good experience with blue healers before and so i had isla and isla taught me a lot you know like a lot i thought i knew dogs before but isla taught me a lot and then i came to find out later she's healer and chow chow primarily oh. healer and chow chow so she's like a double dose of independence, stubborn, difficult, mm -hmm. but she's also the most amazing dog ever. You know, she's just, I love her to pieces. I think because of her, I'm obsessed with healers. You know, let's, that's, that's, she's my segue dog. You know, she did that thing. So, you know, here I am. I have, when I met Greg, I have Isla, you know, my healer, chow chow, whatever mix. And she's also got like Malamute and Husky stuff in her too. So mm -hmm. she's like a floof mix. Yes. And then I have Morgan, my aging border collie. And when I met Greg, he had had a, um, an, a very old Labrador. He was like 15, 16 years old. He was skinny as a rail because he had a uh, valley fever. And, you know, his nose was all barnacled and everything. And, you know, he, his teeth were all bad. And, you know, he was half blind. But he was, he was Greg's dog. And Greg adored this dog. So my husband's a big Rocky fan. Everything Rocky, everything Sylvester Stallone. So his dog's name was Sylvester Sly. So when Sly passed, I promised him that we would get a Labrador in the future. You know, I promised because that, that was his heartbreak. So right. fast forward to years later, we have a house in, you know, Washington. We finally have the means to get said Labrador for him. And we hunt for a reputable breeder because we want to make sure it was a healthy breed, you know, because the, the breed can come with, you know, genetic issues. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. So... We did all of our due diligence and we found a breeder and the breed, the breeder had um, a dog, you know, a bitch and she was going to have puppies. Well, she gave birth and she only had three, which is very rare for Labradors, right. you know, so she only had three. One of them was this stunning white puppy, like, you know, and, you know, cream colored, like English cream is, you know, rare enough, but this one was like pretty much like a polar bear from the beginning. Greg wanted him, but we were third on the list. So there was like, we didn't think we'd get him. So we go to get this puppy, knowing that we have one of the two boys, one Drago and the other one was like another one. So we go and we pick, we have no idea which one we're getting until we get there because we were not first picked. We get there and there's the white puppy that my husband wanted, his polar bear puppy. And I guess they told us at the time, the reason that they didn't pick him is because he was playing in his water bowl. 
and he was very rambunctious. I'm like, oh, he's a puppy. Well, it's not a big. <laughs> see where I'm going with this, correct? I do. I do. But keep yeah. going. Keep going. Yeah. So my husband is obsessed with this puppy. It's everything he wants is his heart dog. Everything that draws, like he, like I, I've never seen a man more enamored with a dog in my entire oh. life. He was just obsessed with everything. And the reason he calls him Drago is again, harkens back to his love of Rocky. So Rocky, I have an Apollo cat. And I, oh my and his name was Apollo when I rescued him, you know? And so we have an Apollo. He had a sly. Now we have Drago. Drago in Rocky IV was, you know, Ivan Drago. He was the big Russian guy. So when we got, we got Drago and all of my pets have voices. I'm just going to be full disclosure here. I am that person that speaks for my pets. And so all of my pets have their own individual voices and I speak for all of them. Love it. I, I think, yeah. So Drago, since he was a baby... Had a Russian accent as Dragovsky Fondo, best puppy in the world. You know, that's and that's how we speak for him. <laughs> and oh, that's uh, great. he got a collar when he was a baby. My husband went out of his way to find a person who would make a collar that had the little Russian sickle, the hammer and sickle. <sighs> yes. Because, you know, this is back in USSR days. We're not, you know, so he had hammer and sickle on his collar and he was, you know, best puppy in the world. And when we sang for him, it was a... Uh, the Russian national anthem to Drago. So Drago, Stefano, Drago. <laughs> yes. This is what we raised. Now. Well, and, I mean, the name alone it was foreshadowing, wasn't it? <laughs> My dad calls him Putin puppy. Just to let you know. Like that's, he is, he used to make me cry. And the reason, like, I gave that whole backstory about all the breeds I'd had before is to give an idea of how much experience with dogs I'd had before, you know? Yes. I'm very experienced with puppies, very experienced with very difficult, stubborn, intelligent animals. Drago used to make me cry <laughs> on the constant. Like, we would, we had him crate trained. We had everything. We took him to, we took him to puppy obedience by the like the, the second to last one the teacher had to take us aside and ask us not to come back oh, because no. Drago was distracting the other dogs so he was so stubborn like she couldn't even deal with him oh, and she's a professional train like like she we even she couldn't deal with him he was just so much dog and when he was a puppy we kept him in the spare room um you know, during the day because we didn't want to lock him too much in the crate. And we'd come home and it would just be dreading what did Drago do in oh, the room? Goodness. What did he do? Because he was getting too big for the crate. And so we, but we didn't want to give him the big, big crate until, you know, he got to a certain point. So it was like that in-between stage. Yes. He ripped up and ate all the carpet <sighs> in the guest room, which was fine because we were going to remodel it anyways, but it just kind of sped the timeline up. He customized, when he got older, he customized all the wood trim around the house. So uh, almost every single piece of wood trim in my house has been customized by Drago. I have a cat right now. He's assisting. I, um, and, this is Apollo. Yeah. Hi, Apollo. My old man, Kitty. Uh, oh, yeah. sweet boy. Yeah. I love that he customized the way customized we, we don't love, say destroyed it was customized oh, by drago. i love this yes yeah my hope chest the cedar hope chest mm -hmm. customized by drago the corners nibbed yes yes i love this mm. Mm. i'm glad somebody loves this because i didn't well <laughs> i i appreciate your i appreciate your outlook on it you i have appreciate to, you know yes you have to it's it made me cry. I mean, I like I said, I used to go to bed crying because he wouldn't let us sleep. He was always whining. He was always just obnoxious. I mean, but the, he was, but as he got older, he became an amazing, amazing dog. Like I, he's my head. I, I'm sorry, full disclosure. I swear a lot, but he is my <laughs> head. And head. I love him, but he drives me nuts. But he is my baby boy. And um, sorry, am I, am I allowed to swear in here? I have no idea. You know, it's okay. I'm going to try to make it family friendly. So I might oh, just okay. silent just, it out. But just leap it out. Yeah, it's fine. Sorry. Okay. No, but um, it's either way, though, because we're good. Because either way. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, he's just he's a big derpy dog. So that was my story of him growing up. Now, now 
um, when he was, you know, like other dogs, like, you know, they have their stuffy stage where they go through and they destroy all the stuffies in the world. Nothing can survive. He has certain ones that are his babies. So he oh. takes like certain stuffies that like we've had one we call pumpkin bear, which is basically like um, a, it looks like a Labrador dressed up in a pumpkin outfit. And he's had pumpkin bear since he was a baby. And that's one of the very, like one of the few that has carried over since he was a baby because he suckles on them. Oh, so it's very, sweet. very cute where here you have this dog who is nothing but trouble, but he suckles on his babies. Well, and so. it's funny too, because when they do all those, like what we say, bad things or whatever, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it usually is no reflection of their personality at all. As far no. as like they're, you know, they're usually still so sweet and affectionate. Oh, absolutely. They're just busy or mischievous they're just naughty. or bored they're naughty. or yes, yeah. yes, exactly. And, and I know that, you know, things can be easily rectified for him. One of the big things, because he is a lab, like I've never had a lab, so I'm still learning all it. Like I've never had a dog that did what it's called. I call it aggressive love. So aggressive love, like Isla in the morning, she'll come and she'll greet me and she gives me kisses and she, you know, nibs, she cobs, you know, and that's her thing. You know, when Isla wants attention, she gets her attention and then she's done and she moves on. You know, I think it's a very healer like thing. They want their attention when they want it and then they're done. They move on. They do their own thing. Drago. When Drago wants attention, you have this 120 pound Labrador all up in your face. And he does this thing where he takes this big, huge knob head and he <laughs> loves you. He's just like, he pushes it right here and he wiggles his whole body, but presses against you. And you're like, Jesus, what are you doing? And then he comes over and he washes you. And it's very aggressive <laughs> love. <laughs> like, I am loving you. You're meant to love me, you know? And I'm just like, it's it's just like in your face. And I found out from other, la oh, that's normal. That's a lab thing. That, that, that's, that's normal. Like, I, I'm learning this aggressive love thing. I'm learning that. I will go to sleep and I will have this dog that comes up for cuddles and he will lie across my chest and I will have 120 pound. Um, what do you call them? like the, the weighted blankets? Like I yes. have that as yes. well, though, every night. That's, that's my son. Um, you know, and I get used and it's, you know, he steals blankets. Like I've never had a dog that still, that stole blankets as much as this one does. Like he's terrible. And my husband loves him sleeping in bed. Me, I'm like, give me some space, you know, like, because he goes in and he pushes, you know, with dogs, it's, it's typical, but yeah. You're hanging off the side of the bed, shivering because Drago has all the blankets. Greg, oh my God, like Drago can do no wrong. So Drago can take all of his blankets and Greg will still be like, it's okay. He's comfortable, you know, like, and I'm just like, get off the bed, you know, <laughs> like I'm freezing. I get him, you know, like, just get him off the bed. You know, he'll, he'll come back. Greg's like, don't disturb him. He's sleeping. He's nestled, you know? I tease Ricky, my husband, all the time. I was like, one day I hope you talk to me like you talk to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because he's the same way with, um, he's he's a self-professed, like, dog person when I first met my husband. Mm -hmm. Like, he tolerated cats, but he wasn't a, a cat person. So when we went and we rescued Mila, um, I told him I was getting a kitten. You know, I, we, I, I'm not a single cat person. Like I have Apollo, but he needs another cat friend. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they need to have another one. So he was like, Arr. so we went to the humane society and we got, we went to go pick out this kitten and I was going to choose this one floofy little tabby. And he's like, mm, whatever. And he goes over and he sees this little kitten in the corner. She's in her little cage and she's batting through the, the cage. And he's like, you know, poking his finger and she's batting and, Next thing I know, we come home with that kitten. That's the of one that Greg chose. Yes. And so Greg had never had a kitten. So it was just like, you know, raising with that. So to this date, when we, when he got Mila, it was, we have to get a cat toy for Mila. We have to do this for Mila. So, yes, you know, it's, it's funny because he has to get the finest things for Mila or the finest things for Drago. But it's like, oh, Apollo and, uh, you know, Isla, whatever, we'll just go whatever. But it just cracks me up. It's just like, you know, like they're secondary. But his babies are like first come, first serve for everything. So. Yeah, it was That's funny because I like had our healers um, before Ricky and I started dating. And I had three mm -hmm. at the time. I just, we lost little Roscoe in November. But um, yeah. Um, so it was so funny though because Eleanor, Eleanor and Lily are our seniors and they're litter mates, 
and um okay. eleanor we call her the office manager she's always very yes. serious and mm -hmm. she's the one that keeps everything like if if it starts getting out of control she shuts it down so she's, she's like angela in the office that's that's her that's eleanor kind of yes <laughs> yes exactly and um only she's probably not quite as wound so tightly she's not as, as anal retentive but yes you got it. yes yes yeah. but very very serious all the time and i don't know if you ever watched the um i guess it was from the 2000s phineas and ferb i don't know if yes. you ever saw the cartoon yeah uh perry the platypus that's always like very stoic but has the one lazy mm -hmm. eye that's her mm -hmm. she has the, the lazy eye and cool. you know and oh. we even joke we'll call her agent e because whenever she's done she'll just retreat to wherever and you know how they would always be like where's perry and he'd be off being agent p um, mm -hmm. so we'd be like, where's Eleanor? And we're like, oh, she's agent E right now. But it was so funny because she walked up to Ricky the very first time he came over and immediately sat down and just stared him down. And then she just put her paw up on his leg and oh, like, he was accepted. From, yes. And from that moment on. And so then it was funny because, at, you know, then once we married and he moved in here and every night when we go to bed, even though she's very serious, she's not highly dramatic, like healers can be she hops up next to him on bed every night every night and she flops across his chest oh my goodness said, it's like miss piggy something miss piggy would do in the muppets oh and so, so we call dramatic. it yes it's very dramatic every night very, we, for, it, for healers that's extremely dramatic like that's not normal yes like i get i'm envious like you see on like the healer page people who have like their dogs and they like you know can flip them over on their back and cuddle them and i'm like why would you do that with a velociraptor like yes. I, 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 <laughs> well who, now uh, now who roscoe are these people yes roscoe would do that roscoe loved to get up and he loved to lay on his back in our arms and um now mm -hmm. he would never he was small he was a tiny healer but he would never let us pick him up because in his mind he was not a tiny healer and you don't go picking up big dogs no no um but yeah super snuggly and everything but these two they of course very healer always want to be there but it was so funny because um of course even though they were here before ricky ricky of course now how can he resist that when they you know just so especially eleanor so obviously is like you're my person you know you're and my I man i love that i mean isla when it's funny because morgan immediately loved greg like mm. he, that morgan claimed greg as his like he became his person yes. it was funny like i had this is my dog same but it was mine my baby like my soul puppy like he helped me through like like when i brought had a really nasty breakup before i met greg and like i was very very depressed and i i got morgan morgan helped me through like he was mine mm -hmm. yes like one look at greg and he's like you're mine you're mine yes. like and and i was just chopped liver my isla however my eily sky oh. she she actually growled at him the first time like, you're kind of like yeah. it's my girl she's got me. you know but but yeah no but she she still gives her the betrayal because when dad comes over and dad wants attention she just she flirts oh, the healer it. flirts and cracks me up just hi dad hi I hi and it wiggles her little it. tail hi you know they're so sweet yeah the traitors <laughs> i yeah. i have said that too i've been like little benedict arnold's mm -hmm. and, yes mm -hmm. yeah and all of uh, roscoe too roscoe became ricky would call him his wingman and um i you know I, I you may know him from facebook but roscoe only had three legs and he had the face of a baby seal and he had a little underbite and so he could do whatever he wanted. He was just- Because he was so damn cute, yeah. Yes, he could do whatever. And he actually, now when he was a puppy, he was pretty precocious and mischievous, but he, you know, as he grew up, he was such a good dog too, but yeah, so dramatic. He, very athletic, very capable, very fast, great jumper. It was one of his hind legs that was missing and um did not stop him at all but boy if he did not get his way you could suddenly hear sarah mclaughlin in the background and the limp <laughs> would be so heavy he would heavy limp and he'd get to the door and oh, then he would turn God. and look to make sure that everyone was watching 
And then he would heavy limp out of the room. It was so much. And it was so funny. And um, so I used to tease Ricky and I said, because Ricky would say, that's my wingman. He always referred to, to Roscoe as his wingman. And I used to tell him, if I ever see the two of you leaving the house without me, then I know that you are out to cheat because he is a chick magnet. <laughs> and I said, mm-hmm. you have no, you, there's no way you could go out of this house with him without attracting. Do a little underbite. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Always. So that was always the joke, but he immediately took to Ricky too. He, um, but he, he would still just like now, you know, they, they all adore him, but I came up here and the healers came with me. Yeah. You it's know, the same with me. Cause my husband, he gets like a little, a little butt hurt sometimes because I work from home and ever since the pandemic, I've pretty much been home with the animals. So, you know, and when that happened, Drago was about like one and a half, two years old. So he's been with me pretty much every day. And he's, of course, he's barking right now. He's been with me and Isla's been with me almost every single day, you know, like they're, that's us. So Mm -hmm. we have our own pecking order for sure, because yes Mo- it's mom you know i like i have to work so you know we we all figure this out and it's funny because greg comes home and drago loves greg like drago is like still his dog but he listens to me more oh right because you know i, I i've established it you know like this is how i have to so he looks at greg more as like a toy <sighs> i told him that like he's greg toy you know he comes home and <laughs> You know, because they wrestle on the ground, they play together and they do all that. You know, he, he gets drug whatever he wants. But, you know, with me, it's like, this is mom. You have to listen to mom. And so I think sometimes my husband gets jealous because Druggle will come over and cuddle with me more and stuff because that's what we do sometimes. Like during the, you know, for my break, I'll have my coffee or something and I'll sit on the couch with them and they come for snugs, you know, yes. and whatever, lunch. So, and when I tell him to shut up, like he listens. So, it cracks me up because everyone thinks that when a dog gets to be an adult, you know, because puppies sleep a lot, right? Everyone, you know, that's just normal. They're, they're toddlers. The puppies sleep a lot, but people forget that even adult dogs need to sleep a lot. It's very, very normal for adult dogs to sleep. Even, you know, herding breeds, like they will do their job, but they still need to sleep. Yes. If Drago does not get a nap. He is like an overgrown toddler and he will throw temper tantrums. And there'll be times where he's throwing a temper tantrum and he won't respond to the normal, like, you know, people say to ignore, that doesn't work. People will right. say to do X, Y, and Z. It doesn't work. I've gone like every single training thing that you can tell me to do. I've done. It doesn't work with him. So what I have to do is I have to raise my voice and mom voice and get really snarly with him. And then he looks at you like, how could you want to say that? And like, <laughs> I'm I'll tell so him like hurt. nobody wants you here. Go take a nap, you know, goalie down. Like nobody likes you right now. And he'll look at you like, well, why would you say? And then he'll <laughs> then he'll do what Ro- the Roscoe thing. He will take himself very dramatically from the room. And he, normally he goes and he puts himself to bed in the bedroom and takes a nap in the bedroom. But if he's feeling very dramatic, he will go into the hallway and you can hear him collapse. <laughs> you know i love the collapse the heavy sigh it's just it reminds me in many ways of napoleon dynamite oh so that is my dog just so dramatic everything's terrible like my life is awful like just you know why don't you love me goey stop barking (laughs) he's like you're talking about me this is what he was doing. Where am I doing my interview? Just barking nonstop. There's no reason for him to bark. He's gone potty. He's had treats. He's just thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. There's my I'm life. only gonna I encourage can. him. Are you done? Uh-uh. That's that's her biscuit. You leave it alone. Oh, and this is another thing. Nobody taught me about labs. They throw temper tantrums if there's food. Like if he sees oh. Isla has a treat and she hasn't eaten it, like because she doesn't eat it immediately. She doesn't she like wait sometimes, you know? He will throw a meltdown if there's something on the ground and he wants to get it, like a bone, a treat, something. And she's just by it, but he can't get it. He throws a meltdown over it. <laughs> and they know, like, people, like, <sighs> okay, so another quick story about Drago. He, I call him my savant because oh, okay. he will act like a, he will act like a 
yeah. idiot 90% of the time. Like just like something, there's something going on up there, but it's not quite computing. Like he just, he's special, you know, he's just, yes. However, if food is involved, all of a sudden he is just like Stephen Hawking puppy. He will figure <laughs> out equations, like all kinds. So he will, what he does, he will, he will figure go to the out door. equations. Oh, 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 like he's doing like puppy calculus over here, like trying to figure out like, how can I get my sister's food, you know, without her knowing. So he will go to the door and he will bark like he needs to go outside to go potty. And so I, whenever they go outside, I always ask Isla, do you want to go with him? You know, do you want to go potty? And Isla will, of course, be my good girl, abandon her food and come with me to go potty. Well, Drago will double back and then <laughs> go over really quick and run, run over sneaky to mm. the thing and eat her food as quickly as possible. And I have to run from the door to go over and intercept like, don't you touch her. Damn. Like, and, he just does, <laughs> and he's a lab. So they will chow. Like he has to have a slow feeder for a reason. I never, I, I, again, Labradors. Yes. The volume at which they can <laughs> inhale food. And he knows because I, I was, you know, the healer and chow chow. Are you done? <laughs> Hi, buddy. Oh, my God. <laughs> so he knows. He knows. Because if Isla sees him because the healer, she will go after him. You know, like mm -hmm. I, that's yes. part of the healer but that like people don't talk about. When they go, they go. They're like cobras. They will strike and they are merciless, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so I had a yellow lab named Daisy mm -hmm. that lived to be 16. And okay. yes, she, let's see, lost her probably, it's probably been about six years now. And mm -hmm used to laugh because so stubborn and so that year I, it, people probably thought it was a little Sorry. bit morbid but they would say how old is she and i was like well she's 16. i suspect that this year she's either going to pass away or get her driver's license <laughs> because she was so independent and so stubborn mm -hmm. and she would just do whatever and she would up until the very end when she couldn't anymore she knew better but she would counter surf and I would come in the kitchen and it was that same thing that you were talking about. The inhaling of the food. Yes. And, you know, it's most dogs, if they are busted, they, you know, will jump down and, oh, They'll I drop oh. it or something. We, oh, no. Mm -hmm. She would try Faster. to grab, yes, <laughs> as much food as she possibly could before I could make it to her. Yes. It's like yes. people joke about it, but until you see it in action it's just like it's horrifying yes. and yeah. they're and they're they're defying like laws of physics while they're doing it and yes, the other thing yes. she um as she got older and started losing mobility she had a big bed and she would lay on that bed and it was so funny because like one of her things sometimes she would start doing the incessant licking and yes. I, finally i'd be like daisy stop licking and she'd lick a few more times and then i go daisy stop licking and then you hear this big old paw slam on the bed and that became her thing um as anytime if she couldn't she couldn't protest any other way she would finally do whatever i was telling her to do but she would do a really loud dramatic paw slam like to make sure that everybody knew i'm doing it but i'm not doing it willingly or joyfully isla when she barks because you know when 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 the healers bark it's like world war three it's like <gasps> you know she's just she it's and she's my guard dog like she takes mm -hmm. like she takes very very seriously but we'll tell her you know okay that's enough and then she just keeps going enough you know and so what she does is she goes <laughs> very quiet just a you know just like a last word and you're like isla we're very quiet girl <laughs> you know just just the, that's her little defiance at the end has to get the last word every time cracks me up and that's the thing that's funny is th when they do those things and they're the they're those i know i shouldn't laugh but i can't help but laugh things where you're yeah yeah you're covering your mouth mm -hmm. or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like i don't yep yep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you know because you're trying to be you know you're trying to be the firm parent but at mm -hmm. the same time they do things that are either so cute or it's just like why why are you doing this? Why? You know?
So we have a joke. Um, one of my dear friends, actually, she's also, she's the one who got me on, um, onto the ACD page. And I'm okay. sure you've seen her all the time on there. Michelle Maternowski is her name. Okay. And um, she's, she's like family to me. And she and I joke because um, when you were saying this earlier too about Drago barking for no reason, that's our joke. Whenever the dogs do things, um, we always laugh. We're like, well, we're not capable of understanding why they're no, doing that. No, there's a threat right now. Yeah. I'm, we, I'm, yes. Yes, mm. we're not capable. And so our we will just say to each other, anytime anything like that happens, all we'll say is reasons. Yes, reasons. Reasons. Yes, yes. reasons. Yes, and that's we'll, exactly it. <laughs> like, I'll be in a meeting and, you know, she'll, like, they'll melt on a happen. I'm like, and I have Tom, I'm, I'm so sorry. There's obviously a threat going on. I apologize. Maybe something's getting delivered. There could be a leaf. Who knows? <laughs> a a rogue sale. leaf. Oh, my God. When we first moved to Washington, and I love, of course, you know, she was Arizona. She landlocked mm. puppy. She didn't understand the concept of boats. So mm. when we, because we, um, you know, our apartment at the time was in, um, looked over uh, the Narrows, so which is in, you know, part of the Puget Sound. Mm. So Isla didn't understand the concept of sailboats. So when sailboats would go by, oh, meltdown in the half like it was a huge threat you know they're far away like they're not like by me like you know i can't reach out like we're on a cliff kind of thing like looking over this so it's like quite a ways away through the foliage you know danger oh. <laughs> danger just it just it cra it's just just funny things like that of all things boats or when i attempted the other day to put on you know like we have like puppy tv like on youtube or something you know things to relax them drago so i tried putting on like dogs playing to see how they would be drago flipped out dogs on tv was not an option really oh no not an option so i thought i'll go safe so i found like this one had like pastoral so it had like sheep grazing and i've had very soft music i thought this will be good you know it's something visual Drago had a meltdown over sheep. <laughs> My Labrador meltdown. Like I could understand the healer. No Labrador meltdown. Sheep were not okay. Like he went like ran up to the TV and was like growling at butt hackles. Like the butt furs oh. were up. He knew it was serious when the butt furs go up. It's serious. Like you had with my healer, it's the tail. The tail goes up. Oh. You know, and she can it curls over. That's serious. Like when threat, you know, threat averted tail goes down. With Drago, butt fur action. The <sighs> hackles and the butt furs. The full mohawk. The God, it's it cracks me up. Like you know, and of course, like he he learned he realized you know it's it's just the TV. But even so, I it's cheap. Yeah. She, what is the sheep gonna do to you? what what? Well, like. And even though the sheep were in the TV, they were a threat until he took care were, of them. Obviously, I. Scrapey. There, I mean, I could have been hurt, you know, something that happens. You have no idea what you avoided. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Foot and mouth disease, scrapey. I mean, I, I'm, I'm safe. I'm obviously something. Good boy, Drago. There. Good boy, Drago. Thank, thank, good, thank God, you know, <laughs> but it cracks me up because, you know, I, so I work from home and there'll be days where I work late and then I'll be nights where I work on homework or something. So, cause I'm doing grad school. So I will have really late nights sometimes like 10 o'clock at night. Isla has taken herself to bed. My husband's taken himself to bed. Drago will sit with me and on his little nest, his little bed, and he will be with me. But he's sighing the entire time. Like, are we going to bed yet? Mom? Like he, yeah, like he's working late with me. It just it cracks me up. Like everyone else's gone to bed, but Drago's with me. But it's like he feels like he's working late. Yes, he's exhausted. Does he sleep late the next day? Oh yeah. Like there'll be times like my husband, cause he has to get up for, at work at three in the morning. Cause he mm. has to be there by five. He's a delivery driver. So he has to go really early. So he will take the dogs out in the morning and then bring them back in. I'm like passed out of the world. Like I have no idea what's going on until my husband comes over and like gives me a kiss and goodbye. Um, but sometimes if Drago has been up late or something, he won't get up for that potty time. Oh, he'll be awake to take the treat from dad's hand, but that's about it. You know? Right. It's just like, it's normal that he's like, and Betty eats the treat real quick and it goes back, like he passes out, you know. Well, that's his overtime pay. Because, you know, oh, yeah. you had him. Absolutely. Working he worked hard last hours. night. You know, yeah. he, he assisted. He was there. Yes. Well, as, as far as you know, he was actually doing the work and you were assisting. 
he had to alert for danger. Like there could be things that happen in the night. You know, we have raccoons that come out and eat the food, you know, for the cat bowl. Yeah. Oh, if he hears, cause we could, it's funny. I didn't know this about raccoons. I didn't know that they have like little families that they're in like little communities. Oh, yes. And I guess that they are by like male and female. So we have this group and I saw them when they were babies and they've grown up together and they're sisters. Oh. And they're all together. And then there's like a couple others that come and go. But it's primarily the three sisters. And they come in and they eat. And Drago always knows when they're there because we'll be out here. It's like 9 o'clock at night. And it's, because you hear me just, you know, just get very upset. The sisters are there, you know. And they're not going to do anything. They're just eat. They, they're there for the cat food. They're gone. Yes. They're good. You know? Yes. But it just it cracks me up because they're a threat. So. so what do you think you've learned from your dogs? I mean, I, I, everyone talks about how, um, you know, when you become a parent, you know, it changes you and all of this stuff. You know, I'm I'm not a parent. I my husband and I we, we've tried for many years. It just it's not in the cards for us, unfortunately. You know, but um, you know, but I'm a I'm an aunt, and I've taken care of my niece and nephew many many times when they were younger. Like stayed over at my house. Like nobody mm -hmm. talks to you about how much kids eat. Like they they never tell you that. Like they eat all the time. Yes. Like small amounts. Like snack all the time. Like it's like they will. It, it, if anything, that's where all the money goes. It's for snacks for the children. You know. <laughs> yes. Because they never eat the same thing, especially if one has ADHD, like my nephew does, like me. And it like, it's not the same thing as the other one. You know, it's they it's different snacks. You know, so you have to prepare for that. But nobody tells you how similar certain dogs are when they're puppies they command that same amount of attention and mm -hmm. this is something that people have been like oh it's not the same <clears throat> i know it's not the same but they humble you so dogs are wonderful and like children they will humble you you think you know everything you think you have it figured out but you don't you know you think you're prepared like I said, like I, I thought I had, you know, 20 some odd, you know, like God, 30 some odd years on me, you know, when I had drugs, you think you're prepared. You think, you know, you don't, they humble you. So I think that's one thing that my dogs constantly teach me about myself is, you know, how resilience kind of thing. Like you become very resilient when you have dogs, the, you know, especially during the pandemic where I, you know, I didn't know that I could be that person that stays home every single day. But because of my dogs, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm totally fine. Like, some people were just, like, climbing up the walls. Like, I'm an introvert. I'm like, I'm totally fine with this. But they taught me that they're the best coworkers ever. Like, sure, you know, they have their own, you know, drama and everything. But they're awesome coworkers. I would have them any day of the week over the politics of office spaces, you know, like, just any day. I can bribe them with food. It's not that hard, you know. So, and it all comes back to the snacks. It do, you know, it's all full circle. It's just it, like kids. It's always about the snack. Always feeding them. You know, just yeah. Well, thank and, you, you know, so you're a parent, much. You understand, so you know you get yes, it. Yes, so. yes, totally. And you know, it's funny because I, um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. I before I was a parent, and even after a parent, I always hate it when people are like, "Oh, but you don't know if you don't have kids." Okay. It is right. a different experience. I mean, For you know, sure. that, that is a unique experience, but, um, there, there is something just as like the responsibility is no less. Absolutely. not. You know? who, and, and I, and I, it makes me wonder, like, if you say that it's not responsible, like what kind of a dog parent are you? Right. Well, when and you say things like that. Yeah. The thing too, is, I mean, the dogs are brilliant at learning to communicate with you, yes. but your dog is never going to learn English and eventually one day be able to tell you my ear hurts or my stomach yes. hurts or my, Absolutely and, not. you know, so, and I know that there are some parents that, that don't ever have that happen and that they have, that's a different you challenge, get but, Absolutely, yes, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but for many, for the most part, eventually it becomes easier with kids you know and but with with your little furry people it's always that you always have to stay in tune to yes you know and and always have to be um paying attention and 
kind of like, okay, what are you telling me and what's going on here and mm -hmm. interpret, learn to interpret what they're, you know, what they're saying and what they're communicating. Right. And because then it, yeah, it, te it teaches you the communication, the non-communication part for sure. Yeah. And, and then, um, you know, at the opposite end of the spectrum too, and this, you know, people probably will think this is insensitive too, but like, I've had a lot of loss in my family. Um, my, my mom, my dad, and my only sibling, I lost all of them to cancer. And so I'm not saying this from, thank you, thank you, but I'm not saying this from a place of not having experienced it. But when I've lost dogs too, you know, people, when someone loses a dog, I think a lot of times people tend to kind of minimize that. But one thing that I always, grief. well, it is, but you know, the grief. other thing too, and once again, not minimizing the loss of a person either, but if you lose a family member that is not someone that lives in your home that you spend all day every day with or many hours every day with it's mm -hmm. a different kind of loss and when you lose one of your pets that's a huge that's a void in almost every single thing you do absolutely you know it's i mean mm -hmm. like with my parents i talk to them on the phone all the time and of course i you know and spent lots of time with them and all that. So of course I missed all those things, but you know, like with Roscoe every single night, Roscoe eventually crawled up and curled up to me and snuggled next to me. And, and that was something like every single night and every single day when I would come home from work, he would come around the corner. And so, I mean, they're, they're such an integral part of your every day that I hate to hear too, when people minimize those losses, because it's a, it's a different loss, but it's equally huge. When I lost my Morgan, um, it, it, it shattered me, it, you know, yes. and it's not even just dogs. Like, you know, when I was younger, when I was 18, I'd rescued this mom and her brand new litter of kittens. And, you know, um, I rate the, and the remaining kittens, you know, cause you know, kittens pass, you know, things happen. Yes. So, yes. Um, the mom went to live with my brother, but I had the three boys and I had my boys, my three huge cats, long haired beasties from when I was 18 until, you know, early thirties, you know, like they were my boys, they were my yes. world yes. and they went, they were there. They were consistent for me, you know, through all my heartaches and everything and like learning, you know, because I didn't get diagnosed with ADHD until I was 39. So I went through my entire life you know, feeling like something was wrong with me. And the only animals, the only, the only ones in my life that were consistent, who didn't feel like were judging me or anything was my pets, mm -hmm. you know? So it was very difficult for me when I lost them um, because they, they all didn't die at the same time. You know, it was just like, you know, like, you know, lot, you know, different periods, but it, it's, you know, it's been over 10 years, but I still, I still can't talk about them. Well, you yeah, know? it's not, yeah. um, what um i i saw it, a meme of all things like re, you know of all the things recently but um it was interesting because it was a um <clears throat> it was illustrated with like a ball and a mason jar and mm -hmm. it had um a sequence of the ball with the mason jar in it and the mason the ball keeps getting smaller and smaller but the jar stays the same and then there was another one where the ball stays and the jar keeps getting anyway i can't describe the visual but the point was that it was saying people tend to think that over time our grief gets smaller but instead we just grow around our grief i think i agree with that yes and you know there, it's there was one i haven't know if you've ever heard of it but it was um it was something that i came across like a uh, Hi, Paulo. So he's, he's, he's hunting right now. So he's, oh, 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 thank you. He, um, he kills his little stuffed aliens. Oh. So my cat brings me things. So he's come on, Paulo. He has a stuffed alien right now that he carries around. He's killed it and he's bringing You're it. You're so me. safe. I'm no okay. aliens, no sheep. They, oh, it's <sighs> not even just that. He has stuffed dinosaurs. So it's dinosaurs and aliens that he kills and he brings them to me. So yes, I am safe every night from like a galactic invasion or from dinosaurs, you know, like Jurassic well, Park also, is not going to happen on his watch. And you know? Drago and happen. sheep and sailboats. Think of uh, all, you know, <laughs> all the things. All like, the I, things. Not, I don't want to leave my house because thank God, you know, like <laughs> no. all these threats that happen. So, but 
sorry, getting back to what you were saying, it was, there was a poem or not even a poem, a little story I heard years ago. And it was about how dogs aren't, aren't dead. They're napping in your heart. Oh, yeah. And it was, you know, sometimes, you know, when in the beginning of grief, you know, they're so close to your heart that their little tail was wagging and it was beating it against your rib cage. And that's why it was hurting is because they were wagging their tail so much. But then they would settle down and nap. And sometimes they would wake up again and they they hear you and they beat, you know, and then they oh. would settle down again. And so it was just this visual thing of, you know, they're not dead. They're napping in your heart. And when you think about them, sometimes when you feel that pain in your chest. Yes. It's them just beating their tail thinking of you. That's a beautiful visual. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Like, oh, even now I'm just like the feel. Like, I know. I get, I get that way too. <laughs> I'm talking about this. Puppies. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, know. like it's just, yeah mm, mm, lock it down yeah it's just it's, you know it's grief grief is grief it doesn't matter who it is what it is if it touched your heart you're allowed to grieve in whatever way you need to for as long as you need to grieve yes yes and I think minimizing grief is just that's just a very selfish mentality for people to have I, yes, I totally agree. And I, and I feel sad too, for people who, um, minimize that grief of the loss of a pet yeah. because I've know that they've never, ex like they've exactly. missed out on something, thank, you know? Ex thank you. If, if somebody is not grieving the loss of a pet and the same way it would, or just anything that that means to me that they they need to work on something in themselves. And maybe this could be they have their own trauma or something or just yes. the way they were raised, you know, and I'm not going to judge anybody for, for what that is, but you don't like, I just, you don't get to tell somebody how to grieve. Like you, just, right. you don't get to do that. You don't have that right. You don't know that relationship. You don't know the situation around it. You just don't get that mentality the same way to me. Like you don't get to minimize like my relationship with my pets. They're my children. And I know the concept of fur babies, like it offends people, but these are my children. I've tried, you know, yeah, and no. it's, this is what I have, you know, and someday I maybe my husband and I will adopt. We're going to try that, but adoption oh, yeah. and fostering, it's extremely expensive and very difficult. But people don't realize that. Like, no, that's hard. So it's yeah. really hard. So to me, it's like we as a society need to understand that we having children is a luxury. Having mm -hmm. the ability to raise a family is a luxury. So for some of us, this is all we're going to have. And it's not just, you know, cats and dogs. It could be horses. It could be, you know, you know, snakes. It could be whatever it is. It's yes. that's, you know, people have connections with other animals and we can't like, you know, judge that or minimize that because it doesn't fit into our ideals right no exactly and and having it's it's really not even just having that it's not a just you know what i mean like yes. it's it's equally powerful and Correct. i mean you know very so this is kind of on a different note but a little bit more um I'll leave you with a little bit of humor sort of maybe i don't know oh, if, you, if you listen yeah. to many podcasts or not I've but, listened to a couple. Yeah. What work I have to do them. So, um, oh, okay. I, I, I help with the whole, like, there's a lot yeah. of work with podcasts. People don't realize there's a lot of work behind the scenes. For that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. one of my favorites, there's a radio station here and I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area and it's a country mm -hmm. station and it's, um, KSCS 96.3 been here forever. And they do a bit every Monday through Friday called second date update. Oh, yes. I love Second Date Update. We used to have that in Arizona. Yep. Okay. So they actually, I think, are the ones who started it. And mm -hmm. I always have to I always have to qualify the statement, though, that if you search for the podcast, there are radio stations all over the country that do it now. And I get caught up on the one here. And so I want to hear more and I'll listen. And the one here is much more family friendly than a lot. Oh, like, okay. So um, a lot of them I've listened to from other markets and I just can't because it's like, I, I feel like I need to take a shower after some of these stories, but yeah. the ones here. Um, so, so theirs is the graphic that actually looks like a, um, like a comic strip uh, graphic art cover photo and it's um, new country second date update. So anyway, there was one last week and the girl called in because they had a great first date and she couldn't understand. And 
why they didn't go out again. And she said that she even talked to the guy when they were on the date and was saying that she wanted to adopt a puppy and asked him if he would be willing to go with her and help her adopt a puppy. And he said, yeah. And so she's like, I thought we had plans that we were going to go and he was going to help me adopt a puppy. And so they're like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So they get him on the phone and they ask him what happened. And he's like, yeah, she asked me if I would pay the adoption fee for her to adopt the puppy. And they go, oh, oh. okay. She didn't tell us that. No. Yeah. And he said, if she can't afford the $75 adoption fee, she doesn't need to be adopting a puppy. No. No. And so they bring her back on the line. I thought my mm. head was going to explode the whole time. She's like, what's the big deal? Well, no, I can't afford the $75 adoption fee, but puppies aren't expensive. It's not like I have to start a college fund. I'm not going to, it's not going to cost anything, I, but I, <laughs> so I'm, my eyes are like rolling right now. And I'm just like, I know, I know. And I listened to it on the podcast. I didn't hear it when it was live, but I thought, I'm really glad I didn't hear it when it was live. Cause it, I, I think I, I would have been, been raging in my car. Yeah. I would, yes. I might've mm -hmm. actually been pulling over and calling the radio station. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. they even acknowledged afterwards. I, I think they even said to her, you know, maybe you should not be adopting a puppy right now while, mm -hmm. but yeah. So when you were saying that too, just about how some people think, well, it's not a big, no, uh, no, it's, it's a thing. It is a thing. Like you have to like, just, and I said, this is somebody who used to work in rescue. Like I understand, you know, like I, and I, you know, I, I remember being, I didn't ever had a lot of money myself personally. Like I understand being the poor college student, you know, wanting to help with animals. So I get that some rescue fees can be very, very like extreme. Sometimes they're just like, they're very expensive sometimes. Like, and they want, you know, you have to like, have a pet's jar. they want to have X, Y, and Z and they want to have all this stuff. And you're like, look, I just want to help a dog. You know, I don't, I don't want to spend 600 bucks to, you know, rescue a dog. Like yes. I just, you know, some of them I think can just be a little extreme, but that said, I, I, I agree that if you can't spend $75 to rescue the dog, how are you going to afford the food? How are you going to afford this? Because are you going to feed him old Roy? You know, and if that's all you can afford, there's no shame there. But like, you know, most people tend to try to do a little bit more than the bare minimum. Well, and you, you don't ever plan for an illness. You don't ever plan Absolutely. for, I mean, I mean, you could plan for it, but you don't ever schedule it. You don't no. ever say, oh yes, when this happens, you know, there uh, things happen with them that you don't ever. When he was a puppy, we were always at the vet because again, Labrador, nobody talks about it. <laughs> they eat everything. They don't, they, they're like children. Every, they pick things up with their mouths and their mouths are the other hands. And so it was always just what did Drago get into? And it was diarrhea and it was going back to the vet. Oh, he has Chiaria because he had, you know, something. And so it was deal with that. Then it was after that would be fixed. Something else was picked up in his mouth and he's got diarrhea again because it was constant diarrhea. Like people don't talk about how sensitive their stomachs are. When they're sensitive, they just, they poop. Yes. yes. Lots of poop. And sometimes Lots that means a special diet. Yes. And so he was for a long time on a very special diet. He's a lot better now, but it was okay. as a puppy. It was just, he was very delicate, you mm -hmm. know? So it was just, and the vet things, like the vet things are expensive. Yes. Like they're, they're not cheap because it was almost always an emergent vet situation. So we, so I know you're very knowledgeable about, I, I know I've seen people ask breed questions and I know you're very knowledgeable about those things. So um, here's an interesting one in our household. And um, tell me if you've ever heard of such a thing, but Lily and Eleanor are the healers. Mm -hmm. And summer before last, we were taking them to the vet. Now we're Texas, hot summer. Yeah. We were taking them to the vet. And it was in the afternoon. It wasn't, it was 10, 15 minute car ride. And we had Roscoe and Lily and Eleanor. So this is interesting too with Lily. She's pretty much completely blind now. Oh. And um, I know, bless well, her little puppy heart. I know, I know. And she smiles yeah. all the time. Like she's the happiest, best nature. That, that's just how I love, I love, I love puppies. I love yes. the gray and the gold. Yes, yes, the frosty, frosty face. And um, 
Silver so, Snoots. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Silver Snoots. Ever since she was little, though, this is a healer. Ever since she was little, she has not liked to go outside. She's almost been agoraphobic. She likes her backyard. Yes. But then as she started losing her vision, it was gradual. I almost wondered if maybe there was always something about her vision that made her feel vulnerable when she was outside. And that's why she didn't like it. It could be. Because um, she'll, she's fine going out in our backyard, but could never take her out front to go for a walk. And at our old house, she didn't even like going in the backyard there. You know, it could so, have been something because that she doesn't know her environment. So that's why she was hesitant to do it. That could be and something like maybe that. scared her. So we're mm -hmm. making this vet visit. And like I said, we don't, we didn't take little, we don't take her a lot of places because it is traumatic for her. So yeah. Ricky was taking Lily into the vet and I was getting Eleanor and Roscoe because it was going to be easier for them to be managed and he was going to take yeah. her. So I opened the door to the vet. And Ricky is on the floor in the middle of the waiting room. I'm trying to process what's happening. And Lily is having a grand mal seizure. Oh, and man. as I'm watching this, all of a sudden I feel tugging on my leash and look down and Eleanor is having a grand mal seizure. It was the strangest and most terrifying thing I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. So the vets, they run out, they take care of him, get them all, you know. Yeah. Cause all you can do at that point is just wait it up. Yes. And yeah. then we get him drinking some water and settle down and clean him up. Cause of course, bless their hearts. They tinkled everywhere and, you know, yes. salivating. I, and Yep. So, I used to have a, a border collie who had seizures a lot and it was just, it's the worst. They, they are out of it. They just don't, they don't know what's going on. And, you know, and it's not, everyone always thinks it's going to be the shaking sometimes, but it's really not all the time. Like, you know, yeah. when, um, when Sasha had hers, it was just, she would just, her eyes would be unfocused and she'd just like look around and oh, so kind of hers were kind of more like the absence seizures. Yeah. And it was just, you know, but she, and, and she would, you know, urinate and stuff like that, you know, and she would be very embarrassed afterwards. And oh she yes. She came out of it, but yes. they would last anywhere from like a couple seconds to sometimes up to a minute, you know, and she was on, on, ended up going on phenobarbital and it helped her a lot. And she's a, mm -hmm. you know, much better but she was a rescue so yeah yeah you don't know the history you never know where yeah. yeah so anyway um we chalked that up that was a couple summers ago we chalked that up to the heat we we thought that the heat it could on, be the, the heat car, or the stress yeah right well that time we thought well so then we were like okay we'll reschedule again for the fall and try mm -hmm. again in the fall when it's not so hot and um it happened again so long thing, yeah. story short, we cannot take either of our senior girls to the vet because mm -hmm. as soon as we take them out to the car, they both start having grand mal seizures. So it has wow. taken us, it's, it took us over a year to find a mobile vet in our area. Mm -hmm. And so now they will come here. So just talking about vet expenses that you don't ever yeah. plan on and bless their hearts. They have, so I had a vet, a, a vet that did house calls for decades, but he would always bring his, his table into the house. And so the dogs never had to leave the house. Well, this is a father daughter that are both vets and they have a van and the, it's all set yeah. up for their treatment stuff. And they came a few weeks ago and even just taking the girls out into the van, they both had seizures out in the van. So, um, yeah. the good thing is this, the vets were super sweet and, um, said, we're so glad we saw this to, so we can see what you're talking about. And next yeah. time we'll come in. And they said, obviously we're, we know that there's some things we just aren't going to do because it's so stressful. And it happens. Them. You never know unless until it happens. Like you just don't, you don't know. Yeah. It was so bizarre though, that both of them, that. It, it both of them do it and both of them it happens um but you, i never and all the dogs they have I've had there's like life. a gene i think that can be associated did they ever get a genetic test or anything like that mm -hmm. um okay because i know that there can be certain genes um that can be responsible or sometimes have a relationship with dogs developing epilepsy or having epileptic you know type events okay so, interesting well yeah and uh, these are obviously yeah. obviously these are triggered by the stress of yeah. Yeah. And it could just be something that as they've gotten older, they're just their tolerance for certain things, you know, like every it's, it's, and it could just also be 
I hate to say like learned behavior, but it could just be some their like their body. That's how they compute it now. Like that's how it goes. Well, not- it used to be maybe they had like a threshold, but that threshold's gone. So yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I know that's the way with people. You know, sometimes like they're yeah. fine with something until something makes them faint, and then mm-hmm. from that point on, whatever that something was will always make them faint. Even though up until or that you develop point- an allergy to something as you yep. get older. Sometimes, yep. It's just yep. your body's like you know like an autoimmune response type thing. It could be. A million yeah. different things, you know, and without knowing the physiology of what's going on with your dogs, it's just, I would say in this case, it's just, a, it's a stress response, most likely. Yeah. So, well, if you ever hear anything of anyone else experiencing that and I'm want gonna, to share my yeah, name, yes, I will hunt, start hunting because I think, like, you know, again, like my nerdy, like people don't know I'm a science person, like that, that's my thing. Like, I love the science and I like to dig into things like that. So, I will kind of go down that rabbit hole for you and see what I can find out. Oh, well, yeah. And please don't feel like you have to, but if you ever run across that or if it's... No, really? This is not a... No, it's not a... (laughs) Well, thank you. But yes, (laughs) yes, because it has been a crazy, a crazy thing. And of course, I feel, you know, we feel like horrible pet parents because we got to the point too where we couldn't give them their heart guard because we couldn't... Absolutely, yeah. You know, and, and it's like, no, we really can't take them to the vet. We really cannot. Well, take you can't, them it's not even just that people don't recognize, like, it's not just the vet. Like, I'm sure you probably can't go on vacations as easily anymore because you can't board them unless somebody's at the house with them. You know, that's what we, we've, we have to have yeah. someone come board. Yeah. 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 So, so I mean, come board, there's come just a lot of things here. that come with it. Oh, yeah. that's another thing people don't understand. Like with pets, boarding is expensive. People talk about like daycare. Boarding is like the same. Like when we were gone for like two weeks, cost like two or $3,000. Yes. To board the dogs. Yes, the cost of the vacation. It doubles mm-hmm. the cost of your vacation. It's, it's <clears throat> people don't recognize that. Like it's, you know, having pets is like children. It's a luxury. You don't realize it, you know, depends on like I mean, if you don't really care about your dog and you leave them outside in the leash, you know, mm-hmm. maybe that's a lot cheaper. But you know, like, you know, I take care of my babies. They come home, they have, you know, uh, piles of toys. <laughs> you know, it's, that's their life. I guess I, she's, yes. she's guarding. She's, she's in the floof. So, yes. but you know, and I spend money, you know, getting their like, uh, you know, entertainment things like, you know, cause dogs should be stimulated, you know? So yes. I do their busy toys and things like that. Like I prepare them and I, you know, just like having children. So I'll cut all this part out, but I'll share with you that, um, the podcast is part of a dream that I am working towards. That's awesome. Good for you. Thank you. Well, you know, the good Lord willing, we'll see. But Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to do is um, what we want to do. And Landry, our daughter is in her first year of college. We want to get her through her second year because she's doing that from home. And then when she moves out, we'll have a little more freedom to move. But um, my dream is to open an RV park with a full service doggy daycare outside oh, of a national that'd park. That'd be awesome. That'd be cool. So um, we love national parks. And of course, most mm-hmm. national parks, dogs can only go where cars can go. Yeah. So if people want to vacation in a national park and if they want to vacation with their dog, it's very hard to do everything. Absolutely. So, um, we want to have mostly RV sites, but also have about half a dozen cabins and make everything completely dog centric. So awesome. like everything versus, you know, where a lot of places you can take your dog, but there's a pet, you pay an additional pet fee every day. Or they have like limits on the weight, which is yes. never conducive for big dogs. Yes. Yes. Limits or they on don't the even weight. allow cats. Yeah. That's the yes. one that sucks. Yeah. Yes. And um, so we want to have like the cabins would actually be the joke. The, the tagline is um, where we like you, but we love your dog. <laughs> And it's going to be a people-friendly pup resort, so awesome. they can bring their people as long as they promise their people will behave. As people behave, yes, please, yes, yes. Yeah. So um, that's what we're we're. I've been working on a business plan for about a year and a half, and that's mm-hmm. what we're kind of hoping to do. I think that'll be point. awesome. Yeah, but. While we're kind of in a holding pattern, I was like, you know what, I want to use this time to maybe start trying to build a community and just kind of start establishing a brand. That's the way to do it. Like my, my boss, like the way that she started was she wanted to bring attention to the fact that the, you know, arthritis, for example, there's a lot of autoimmune issues that come with certain types of arthritis. Mm -hmm. And so 
over time, like she started doing her own thing where it was, you know, she started doing like bracelets, like I'll make a bracelet to bring awareness to it. And then the next thing she knows, she's getting all these orders for the bracelet. So she creates a foundation and now she's got this, you know, international foundation that she's running and, you know, we're working on it and it's just international anti-inflammatory, um, anti, um, autoimmune arthritis. That's all we, all we focus on. Is That's amazing. Arthritis. Yeah, That's but it's it starts small. It's you, yeah. and she did on her Facebook. That's what she did. So good for you. Just do this. Get your th- feet going. You know, and you'll figure it out. Yeah. So um, anyway, but when you said that about traveling, that's kind of how it was born out of too, because we've always been blessed to have someone that stays here with our dogs and it's much yeah. more affordable. But we did a trip up to the Grand Tetons in Yellowstone a couple summers ago. And <clears throat> of course, I have to meet all the dogs. And as I'm meeting yeah. all the dogs yeah. on the trip, then I w- was realizing how limited the those families were on what they were able to do on their vacations. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, there's, and then I started doing the math and, and that was one of the things, if we had boarded our dogs, boarding the dogs for that trip would have cost more than the vacation cost, And we couldn't People have done have it. No idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or if you like, and that's if you do like a small like room or something like we always had our dogs together in space because they're bonded. We yeah. always, so we had the bigger space for them. Like we didn't, we never, we never do like basic, like, you know, we're, there are babies. We got to make sure that we call it puppy camp. When they go to puppy camp, they have to enjoy yes. themselves. So. Yes. Well, and that's what, um, you know, we want to have like enrichment activities and things during yeah. the day for the dogs. Mm-hmm. And um, we want to incorporate hydrotherapy too. There, there's kind That'd of a whole awesome. story behind that. But mm-hmm. anyway, so when you're saying that, I I appreciate what you're saying because that's what we're actually kind of working towards. I think it'll be amazing if you guys can get something like that going because – like, you know, that's something that we've talked about is even when we're, you know, because eventually we want, to, we want to move across country, but it was, we're trying to plan out things. And there were so many places where we would have to just like, how, how do you plan to move across country and stay overnight in certain areas? Because so many places are not pet friendly. Yeah. Yeah. So there are more and more pet hotels now, but it still leaves the problem of if you want to do something during the day. Oh, and you, you can't they, just have them in a crate and this thing, or even then it's, they're limiting to like, you know, 50 pounds or less or no cats or something, but we're a mixed family, you know? Yeah. So what are the cats? Like me live in the car? Like, yeah, it's just, yeah. So, so I think well, this is a, a good thing you guys are going to do. So you, you'll oh, get it. Thank you. Well, thank I'll you for support. your time. I so yeah. appreciate you. It was Starting so much fun and everything like, you know, it, it w- was one story turned into like six or seven, but you know, that's how we roll, right? You know what? It's awesome. I love it. I love it. And, um, you know, if you think of more, if, if Drago customizes more oh, stuff, God. whatever, we, there's <laughs> lots of stories. Trust me. Like we'll find more. Don't worry. Like, yeah, you know, anytime. No kidding. Just, just ping me and go, Hey, I got one and we'll, we'll do it. Cause I, I'm hoping to have a story a week at least. And, um, oh, God. I, you know, the I other remember, thing, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I just remember like one, when I, cause Morgan's passed, but I remember years ago, um, it was during like Thanksgiving or something. And like my, my mom's husband at the time, I was living there cause I was going to school at ASU and he had taken out a ham to rest on the counter and I don't know how they did it. But Morgan got the ham and he took the ham and always oh, he a floof. Yes, a here, oh, two floofs came in. Yeah, here, this Chuck. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Barney. Hi, He's buddy. beautiful. Thank you. They are. They're the biggest derps, but they, they're very I, handsome. Uh, that's, yeah, that's Drago. He's derp, 100% derp. But yeah, I know it was Morgan had taken the ham and him and Isla had just finished off this ham. And so we didn't have anything, <laughs> but they had the ham. They enjoyed the ham. So. They're like, you're the best parents ever. <laughs> Like, but it was one of those things because Morgan never, ever, ever mm-hmm. counter surfed. But that day, well, you know what his, you know day. what his limit was. Oh, <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. it just it this is where up, my obedience know. ends right yeah. here. It's and he was just he was the best. I remember when Morgan, like when he used to lie on his side. So, oh, here's I don't know if you can see this is Lily. Oh, he's, oh, this Lily's is beautiful. Thank you, Hi, Lily's Lily. my blind girl. Yeah, I see her eyes are all reflective right now. Yep. Hi, gorgeous. Hey, girl. Hey, BB girl. 
I see your little Bentley's all shining. Yes. <laughs> shining Bentley. Okay, sorry. She- <laughs> no, no. It just it cracked me up because Morgan would just like lie on his side and he would just put his leg in the air and but his one little pinky toe, he just like oh! toe. <laughs> just toe. <laughs> And even up until the day he passed, it was lifting leg, toe, toe, toe. toe. Yeah. You know what that is? Reasons. Uh, duh. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it's an invisible cup of tea right now. You know, like, you know, <laughs> toe. Just, he was British. He just didn't he was know British it. Puppy. He's a border collie. He's an English border collie. Of course. Duh. Hello. Yeah. Well, also, if you know of any, like, rescues, Um, groups that do transport, you know, anything like that. I would love, love, love to be able to use this as a platform too to help spread their stories. I will, I mean, my friend Alex used to do a lot of rescue stuff. I will ask if she's got, you know, stories, but she used to, you know, do transport stuff for free. So I'll ask, you know, I'll I'll ask my friends. I'll see what I got. So Yeah, just any, you know, and just at any point, if it's something that could be helpful to someone else too, you know, because it's also potentially, I mean, Right now, we've got from Washington to Texas covered. <laughs> I mean, you know, so who knows? But um, I'd oh, love to be able I mean, to... we'll find. Well, I mean, you. Um, what is it? You've got Rebecca has Hilo, and Hilo's you know her um, her search and rescue puppy. He's a search and rescue healer. See, so you can reach out to Rebecca and talk to her. Um, Tao with lucky ones. Yeah, <coughs> Tao with lucky ones too, and then. Just trying to think because there's there's a couple people I know like over on East Coast. I'll see what I can find out for you and let you know. But I mean, puppy stories. I like puppy stories. So. Who doesn't like puppy stories? And it just so cracks I'm... me up because like you know, it wasn't for Isla, I would never have gone into the healer group. I would never have joined, and I've never met all these amazing people in my life. So isn't that I know? And I I Lily was my first healer. We kind mm-hmm. of um, stumbled upon her, and <clears throat> when we went to get her. Also fell in love with Eleanor. Eleanor mm-hmm. had been committed to someone else. And um, we were going on a weekend vacation right after we got um, Lily. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the people we got Lily from said, you know what? You can bring her back and we'll keep her that weekend because she was so little and we didn't want to do that to our dog sitter. Yeah. And um, which was very sweet of them. And we came to pick her up after the weekend. And Eleanor, who we had fallen in love with that was supposed to be somewhere else, was still there. The only one left. And, um, and they said that it had fallen through. I don't know what happened, but they said, yeah, she's still here and they're they're not coming. Yeah. You're yours now. Yeah. So, so that's how we ended up with both of them and that they were our first experience with healers. I did not know. An adventure. It is an adventure, but just (laughs) the most, yes, yes. Just Mm -hmm. the most amazing brilliant loyal bad loving yes <laughs> like people don't realize like when they talk about like learning like the communication thing other breeds you get lots of warning signs like they give you like a, a long a bigger bandwidth of you know between reactivity healers it's when Zero it's time it's 100 percent Mm-hmm. And Isla, like that was the one thing I had to learn with Isla. It was just, you have to watch her because her body language signs. Oh my. Speaking of which. Yes. Yeah. Anything Hi. else? She's in major floof mode right now. We need to, she needs to. Oh, we have, the gardeners are here. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. <laughs> so. Danger and have to, yeah. Well, I'll wrap this up for you, but yeah, it was just I. I had to learn, like I had to learn to watch her because I. It was just so sudden, so quick with it. It was just like that snap. It was I. I'd never had that before, so mm-hmm. yeah. Landry was in first grade when we got them, and when Landry and they knew that Landry was their responsibility, like they quickly mm-hmm. knew, and <clears throat> when Landry would have friends over. I would have to make sure that they were with me or that I watched them closely because if they got jealous of the attention that Landry was giving the friend or if the friend did anything that they thought was threatening. They'll snap. Yes. Yeah. They would be Mm -hmm. right there. And I had to always make sure that once, you know. She's the same way. When she gets all worked up, 
um, she will go and she'll grab like a toy or something and shake it. But if Drago's next to her, she will go and bite Drago because she's so reactive that she has to just like, I have to bite, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I've never had that with another breed before. And I think it's just, it's a healer thing, you know, and it's something that I just have to be cognizant of with her and just be aware of it and, yep. you know, plan for it. But I've never had that in my entire life with another dog of mine, you know, and I, and I'm, I've had bully breeds, you know, like, and mm-hmm. You know, they're instinctively other dog aggressive, depending on the, you know, sometimes you can socialize them enough. They don't have that. But most of the time, that's just that's instinctive for them because they were bred to be dog biting dogs. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, but it's just very, very interesting just watching the healer go from zero to 60 because they will go from being the sweet, wonderful dog to full on dingo mode. Yes. Yes. And they mouth like nobody tells you how they mouth when they play and they bite like she does like the happy growls like greg won't wrestle with her because he's scared of her when she does like the happy (laughs) playful growls like and she like i'm just used to it but like she comes over and she will straight up like bite me like on the leg like chomp like let's go let's move lady i gotta go poop (laughs) Mm -hmm. well i when i was when they were little and i would get up in the morning and i would have to walk across the house to get to the back door to let them out Mm -hmm. and it was funny because they would herd me Yes, but I never had to look. I knew who it was because Lily nipped and Eleanor shoved. So they they, they were together. Their, yes, yes, but I knew who I was being herded by, or who was hurting which leg based on whether I'm I was sorry, being shoved. We've, we've or got not. Going on. I'm so sorry. Oh no, you're good. But I'll let you go take care of like, it. I'm just, but yeah, if we can do this all day. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll let you go. But it's, you know, I, I'm glad that we have, you know, talk about this because people don't get it. They don't have healers. They don't understand. Yeah, no, it's a thing. <laughs> and even if they're a mixed breed, that healer, the healer genes, she's 60% healer. So she's yeah, definitely, no. you know, this is her. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll let you go. Yes. Thank you. Have a great one. Right, thank you again. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know that you are busy and I really appreciate that you chose to spend some of your time with me. So let's do a little bit of bookkeeping before we head out. If you enjoy this and you would like to receive the episodes automatically without having to seek them out, then in your podcatcher, follow or subscribe. And that way, every time an episode drops, it'll show up for you and you'll know that it's there. Makes it super easy. You don't have to think about it please go visit the website. It's really cute. It's got puppy pictures. Also, I've got a free gift for you over there if you will go check it out. And if you would like to message me, if you have any suggestions, specific pup stories you want to hear, or even better, if you want to share a story, you can message me right there from the website. That's the best way to get to me for that. Check us out on all the different socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of them. That's where you'll see pictures of the pups that we talk about each week. Also, just other fun pup things. I'm going to put episodes on YouTube as well. Sometimes the episodes are recorded via Zoom, and so there's video. A lot of times it's just us talking, but every now and then there are some fun cameos from puppies or their shenanigans in the background and you can catch all that on YouTube. If you want to help me out, if you would leave a positive review and share the podcast, that would be fantastic. I would be really grateful. And once again, if you want to help me out, I would love to share your story. So please hit me up and let's schedule a time that we can talk. Some people have shared their stories in writing Some people have gotten on the phone and done a chat with me. So we can do whatever you are most comfortable with. Finally, do not forget that you are as great as your dog thinks you are. And go smooch your pooch. Thanks, y'all.